Welcome to the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast, everybody. I'm Ryan Thomas, once again, bringing you another episode of the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast. And I am here to tell you that if you have not heard already, the Chicago Cubs are World Series champions. Champions of the baseball world, winning their first World Series title in 108 years in a classic, fall classic featuring the Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians. The Cleveland Indians were up in the seven-game series, up three games to one. The Chicago Cubs took two in Cleveland, uh, three in Cleveland, and ended up winning the series in seven games. Last night's Game 7, where does it rank among the best Game 7s? It's a hot topic right now in sports, and I wanted to give my take on where I thought uh, last night's Game 7 ranked among um, some of the sports greatest game sevens in world series history first i want to touch on the chicago cubs the 2016 world series champions what did it take for the cubs to go from being a bottom feeder team in major in the major league baseball arena to the world champions of today it took a lot of patience on the part of the chicago cubs fan base 108 years waiting for that championship to finally arrive and it was built by none other than former boston red sox general manager the one that broke the curse in boston theo epstein the vice president of baseball operations for the chicago cubs brought it brought over jed hoyer as the gm from boston and built this team piece by piece anthony rizzo um obviously chris bryant addison russell Um, And obviously John Lester, the former ace of the Boston Red Sox, and Aroldis Chapman being acquired in a trade uh, from the New New York Yankees uh, during the trade deadline this season. Javier Baez, Wilson Contreras, this Chicago Cubs team is built for the long haul, and this is a championship team that was favorited to win the World Series going into the season, and they won it. It's really rare in the sport of baseball for a team to be favored to win a World Series and to actually do it, being that the baseball season is from April to hopefully late October, early November for for a World Series team. Such a long, grinding season. So many things can happen uh, that can go against you and that can go for you. And in the case of the Chicago Cubs, Lester, Jake Arrieta, Kyle Hendricks, um, John Lackey, the rotation did what they needed to do in order to um, go deep into the postseason and and obviously win the division um, and win the National League to get to this point to get to the World Series. On the other end, you have former Boston um, former Boston manager Terry Francona, the manager for the Cleveland Indians. Um, really, this story had a lot of connections. Uh, with the Red Sox and you know obviously Theo Epstein and Terry Francona were the first two that come to mind this started in 2011 the path to this World Series actually started uh, five years ago where the Boston Red Sox had an epic collapse of a season in 2011 where they were um, led by Terry Francona they had the August collapse where they only won seven or eight games missed the postseason Terry Francona and Theo Epstein parted ways from the Red Sox after that. Theo went to the Chicago Cubs. Terry went to the Cleveland Indians. And here we are. Andrew Miller was the shutdown closer for the Cleveland Indians. John Lester was a guy that the Chicago Cubs relied on heavily in this series and in Game 7 especially. Um, And they were former Boston Red Sox teammates. Now, Game 7 itself, I loved that game. That game will rank among the best of all time, but where does it rank in you know the history of World Series Game Sevens? There's been quite a few. Obviously, the most recent one that comes to mind is the 2001 World Series um, with the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks and the New York Yankees. There have been you know seven game World Series since in 2011 um, with the St. Louis Cardinals, 2014 obviously with the New York uh, not the New York Giants, the San Francisco Giants. There have been Game 7s, but a classic Game 7 like that um, has to be ranked among the top three easily. Uh, classic Game 7 that it was. Um, 
I would say that the 2001 World Series between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the New York Yankees might rank a little bit um, higher than that. I would also say that the World Series between the Minnesota Twins and the Atlanta Braves um, in 1991 would rank ahead of that with Jack Morris pitching 10 shutout innings going up against John Smoltz. Uh, that game was won one to nothing. It only took one run to win that game. But this one is different. This one is obviously special. This one featured the Chicago Cubs winning their first World Series in 108 years and the Cleveland Indians trying to win their first World Series since 1948. So um, definitely this was one that was worth watching. This was one that had so much intrigue between two cities, between two teams that are champions of losing. The culture of these two cities, Chicago and Cleveland, have been losing cities um, in their baseball teams um, for quite some time. So they battled against each other, fought tooth and nail. Obviously, the Chicago uh, Cubs had to come back from a 3-1 deficit for a reason. The Cleveland Indians had such a fantastic tooth and nail series. Um, their toughness was unparalleled, and I really don't think this series would have went seven games against any other AL playoff team but the Cleveland Indians because of the fact that they have a deep bullpen with Andrew Miller, Cody Allen, um, and the rotation was led by Corey Kluber. Last night was the third time in which, though, that the Cubs saw Corey Kluber during the series um, due to the injuries of Danny Salazar and Carlos Carrasco, two major pieces on the Cleveland Indians rotation uh, throughout the season, two major pieces that they missed quite badly. And had they you know, been able to pitch, had they been healthy, this series could be could have been completely different. So, regardless, the Cubs are World Series champions. Um, what did I think about, you know, the bits and pieces of Game 7 itself? Obviously, I thought Kyle Hendricks should not have been pulled in, in the inning in which he was. I thought Kyle Hendricks had one more inning left to pitch. Um, thought he was pulled way too early. 63 pitches, that's way too early. Um, I thought that they had one more inning left with Kyle Hendricks, then put in John Lester, then go Chapman if that was the direction that Joe Madden, Joe Madden wanted to go to. They put um, Kyle, they pulled Kyle Hendricks in, or put John Lester in an inning too early. That allowed Aroldis Chapman to come in in the eighth inning, not the ninth inning. And I think mentally that messed with Aroldis Chapman a little bit. I know he was exhausted, but knowing that he has to go the eighth and the ninth inning maybe uh, in order to finish this game, that's a mental hurdle. Uh, mental hurdle for a closer that is used to pitching in the ninth inning and shutting down the three batters and going home. But regardless, if you know that was what it took for the final result, the pulled line drive down the third baseline by Ben Zobris to get that double to put Anthony Rizzo at uh, third um, and and give Zobris. Um, the two-run double um, to put the put the game or the RBI to put the Cubs ahead eight to six. Um, that was what was needed uh, seven to six. That was what was needed to win the game, and it provided so much excitement for a game seven to go into extra innings. Um, I had never seen that before from start to finish in a World Series. This World Series for me ranks among some of the best World Series I've watched. Um, Texas and San Francisco a few years back, Texas was down to their final strike two times, and San Francisco ended up winning the World Series. Down to their final strike, Texas was down to their final strike two times um, against San Fran, and San Fran won that World Series. And obviously, myself being a Red Sox fan, the memories of 2004, 2007, and 2013, those are obviously my favorite. Those, that's my team. I wanted them to win you know, every World Series that I've witnessed, and they have done that so far. So you know, 2004 was a sweep, four games against the St. Louis Cardinals. 2007 was a sweep against the, the Colorado Rockies. And 2013 was ended in six games at Fenway. Um for the uh, Boston Red Sox versus the St. Louis Cardinals again, beating the St. Louis Cardinals in 2013. So I've witnessed a few amazing World Series over my time, but I've never witnessed anything like that. The final out 
in which Chris Bryant had to really throw that ball to first base. It looked like he slipped, but the throw was on a dime on a rope to first base. Um, that was the final out. David Ross hitting a home run in Game 7, a solo shot. Had he not hit that home run, it would have been a 6-5 final score in Game 7. The Cleveland Indians would have been the World Series champions. But he won that. He, he, he hit that uh, solo home run, and that ended up forcing the Indians to tie the game off a of Rajah Davis two-run home run down the left field line right over the left field wall. When Rajah Davis hit that home run, my jaw literally dropped to the floor. I did not anticipate that to happen, especially off the bat of Rajah Davis, who that was his first home run of the postseason, and he's not a power hitter. He's a line drive, base-stealing guy. Um, for him to hit that ball over the left field wall on a Roldis Chapman off a 99 uh, mile an hour fastball that was remarkable that's what November October are built on for the game of baseball I couldn't have asked for a better World Series a better matchup yes I would have loved my Boston Red Sox to be in the World Series but these two teams are the two best teams in baseball this season the Cleveland Indians flew under the radar winning the AL Central um, over the defending champion Kansas City Royals and obviously the Chicago Cubs winning 103 games um, in the uh, NL, one of the you know one of the best divisions in baseball. Obviously you have the Cubs, the Cardinals, the Mets, all three teams, the Nationals, all four teams are are some of the best teams in the uh, league, and for them to do what they did, um, it was extremely remarkable. Nothing short of remarkable. And what's really you know, in closing this uh, segment tonight, what really transcends with me is seeing these photos of people going to grave sites and going to um, memorials for their loved ones, um, taking pictures next to a picture of their loved ones saying, we did it, you know, this and that. Um, the fact that their loved ones missed this moment. They they didn't stay, you know, they didn't, they, they, you know, went up to the, uh, higher power, so to speak, before they got to witness this moment. I'm actually really lucky to say that the last, uh, the first two World Series, 04 and 07, I got to witness with my grandfather. He got to see the Boston Red Sox break the curse, and then he got to see them win it again in his last World Series that he that he witnessed. So that was really amazing for me um, as a baseball fan to be able to share that moment with him. And I know that there were hundreds of thousands of people that didn't get to witness that moment with the Cubs uh, winning the World Series with their family member, whether it be a grandfather, grandmother, aunt, uncle. Um, but I think the Cubs winning this World Series was seen by everyone. Um, and and I, it was an amazing, amazing event. And the only thing that, that I would have changed to make it the perfect you know, event would have been that they'd won it sooner at Wrigley. Other than that, um, it was perfect. So congratulations to every Chicago Cubs fan that I know. Congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. Congratulations to baseball. Baseball needed this series so badly. Um, really, because not because of the sport. I don't think the sport is dying or anything like that. But it's a series that we haven't seen the likes of in quite some time. And it was great for baseball. Entertainment from Game 1 to Game 7 on all different sorts of levels. And I really anticipate um, that baseball will see a spike in ratings um, over the course of next season because of this World Series. This World Series did so much for uh, the sport of baseball. So congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. Next is my way, way, way too early 2017 Major League Baseball Power Rankings. Stay tuned.